But I wanted to, to, to make two remarks about things that were said before. Um, first of all, uh, the worst violence between Israel and the Palestinians um, is around a territory with no uh, settlements uh, and no Israeli presence. Um, and the second thing is that is if, if uh, Gaza is close to the world, it's not only because of Israel, but it could be also because Egypt closed uh, the, the, the border. And there was never a question of firing rockets or putting pressure on Egypt, even if the Egyptians could have changed the situation dramatically in five minutes. Just, you know, opening like be between France and Belgium, for example. And just to explain uh, to our viewers yeah. on that score, uh, so, so it's, what, the Egyptians, it's the Egyptians who are playing the mediators. Why? Ah, because because they uh, they um, they have uh, an interest in keeping uh, the the role of the mediator with, between Israel and uh, uh, and the Hamas. It gives them power. They 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 are not interested in in uh, in a conflict uh, in in Gaza. They are they are interested in, in in peace and quiet. They don't want a Palestinian state because uh, they were they were the occupying force between forty nine and sixty seven. And just like the Jordanians, they didn't even dream of giving the, 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 the Palestinians what they support the Palestinians today. So between 49 and 67, when Arabs were occupying the territories, no one, no one demanded that these territories become a Palestinian state. They were talking only about what was in Israel at the time. Uh, now, in, 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 in the summer of 2005, Israel decided uh, in a uh, mutually accepted unilateral uh, withdrawal uh, to give a chance uh, to the Palestinian Authority. The Palestinian Authority will deny no, we're not, we're, we don't agree, but they will take the territory. And, you know, those who, uh, w the dreamers at the time thought it's going to be something like Singapore. And that will create a new dynamic. Well, uh, the Palestinians decided to vote for Hamas in January of uh, 2006, that four months after the Israeli withdrawal, they voted for the Hamas. And the first thing the Hamas did with the power was to dig the tunnel through which they abducted the soldier uh, Shalit and put fire in Gaza. It was the first round of violence in Gaza. And they, uh, they, uh, this crisis tempted Hezbollah. So it was also the trigger for the long war in Lebanon in 2006. And at this point, Hezbollah killed the Israeli peace camp and opened the way for the longest reign of the right in Israel with I, I don't want to go, because we, we'll, look, we're short on time. I don't want to go back to the <laughs> genesis of it all and the accusations. Uh, it's 15 that, years. No, but there's the accusation as well that Israel uh, at one point bolstered Hamas. Uh, Never. As a, a, as a, counter, a, a counter force against Fatah in the... In the, in the in, back in the day. But mm -hmm. Nuro Day, I don't want to talk about history. I want to ask you, at this point in time today, what is the role of Egypt and what is Egypt's responsibility? Just for the sake of clarity uh, for the viewers, the United Nations still uh, uh, considers Israel to be the occupying power in uh, the Gaza Strip. It has absolute power over Gaza's airspace and borders just so that we're clear, uh, because there were too many inaccuracies to respond to in, in your guests' uh, remarks. Egypt has a strategic interest in making sure that the this uh, uh, aggression ends. It has absolutely no interest in seeing the already uh, catastrophic humanitarian crisis further deteriorate. And uh, quite Why frankly, it has an interest in it being a major player in the region in maintaining that role, and that it has done um, as expected. Um, so the the you know the Egyptian role will always be extremely important in ensuring uh, peace and stability Why in the aren't region. Why are they opening the border? So, this Why is aren't they opening the border? Permanently. Why is Israel not respecting its obligations? Israel is the occupying power, and Gaza is part of the occupied territory. It's not part of Egypt. Wait, but, but why, so Egypt, why, why is Egypt? I don't understand. They, they, they can, because, they because can ease is, the suffering of the population. You are for humanitarian, wait, wait, for humanitarian reasons. One at a time. Nuro Day. That, 
that is available. Humanitarian assistance does cross through Egypt. Egypt has opened its hospitals to Palestinians injured by Israeli strikes. Egypt has sent its ambulances, and Palestinians will always be grateful for that. The responsibility, the onus under international law is on Israel to make sure that the connection, the contiguity of the Palestinian territory is not disrupted, the connection with the West Bank is not severed, and that is on Israel, not on Egypt. Egypt will remain a very important player in Palestinian uh, politics, in the Palestinian struggle for freedom, but that does not abrogate the responsibilities that are defined under international law of Israel, of high contracting parties, of permanent members of the Security po Council, including the U.S. and France and others. Yossi Meckelberg, uh, your thoughts on this? I, I must admit, I find it a bit disingenuous. That the fact that Israel has responsibility, even if it's withdraw, I absolutely agree. I don't think even the Palestinian Authority sees what is just been said about about the role or role of Egypt. There is plenty of criticism among, uh, uh, among the Palestinian Authority and among Palestinians and Gazan on the role of the Egyptian, because the Egyptians are coordinating their role, what they are doing with the Israelis and not with the Palestinians. So let's put it on the table. Let me also say something about 2005, because this is really inaccurate and it's important to the way we look at it now. There is a clue in the name. It was unilateral withdrawal. And this was the arrogance of not coordinating it with the Palestinian Authority. Could that have been with, possible? It was possible. It, it was possible there, and it should have been done. And at the time, the grand strategy, the grand plan of Ariel Sharon was not only to withdraw unilaterally from Gaza, but do exactly the same in the West Bank, because he decided that he could actually draw the borders and future borders between the Israelis and the Palestinians without negotiating it. And this is unacceptable in diplomacy. This will never be sustainable if you behave so arrogantly, even if someone that you regard as your enemy, because this enemy is supposed to be your 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 neighbor the very next the very next day. And that's 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 was the mistake that Sharon did. Uh, it was a typical mistake by Sharon. We should have learned with this. The same goes for Camp David that tried it's, it doesn't make the Hamas nice in any way or form. I don't think anyone of us here would like to see Hamas in, in, in power, though it's for the Palestinians to decide who they want to be governed by. But the fact is, in order to reach a peace agreement, we need both sides needs to negotiate in good faith. If they are not going to do that. In right. addition, only one point, you need an honest broker. You need someone that can really be the honest broker between the two sides. Without it, it's very difficult. All right. No, so you need you need a strong broker that can <laughs> put pressure on both sides. If he's honest, it's you know nice to have. <laughs> okay, a, a strong Fair broker enough. Fair or, enough. Or, or an honest broker. Uh, 